Since 2016, the Duffer Brothers brought their love of 80s cinema directly to our home screens and created a world that we just can't get enough of. Today I will highlight some of the departments that brought this nostalgic juggernaut to life and some things you can look out for while watching season 3. One of my favorite parts when watching a new television series is trying to figure out how each character fits into the world that is being built around us. And this is where the costume department comes in. I absolutely love that they took genuine 1980 designs and combined it with their own, as well as doing callbacks to 1980 films and television series. The costume department also created mood boards for each character in order to make them more relatable to the audience. And I think it's really neat how each clothing item has a callback to each character's past, showing their economic status or if they're hand-me-down, which is in Will's case. You can see Will always wearing hand-me-downs and his Halloween costume was homemade. You can also notice that Dustin's bike is hand-painted while Mike's bike is brand new. All these easily unnoticed details help change all of the actors into believable living characters, which is further explored in Season 3 with a total wardrobe overhaul creating brand new character narratives. The clothes are changing, the characters are changing, and so is their world. And thanks to the Duffer Brothers, we're there front and center to watch it happen. One of the biggest reasons the Demogorgon was such a great monster is because it stayed in the darkness, letting our minds wander about its intentions. Back in the 1980s, visual effects weren't as good as they are today, so filmmakers would have to use practical effects with minimal CGI. This is what the Duffer Brothers did in Season 1 of Stranger Things. The Demogorgon was comprised of 23 motors for the facial mechanism, and the rest was a man in a suit. Season 2 and 3 mostly uses CGI since they now have a bigger budget. It was the intent of the set design and location scouting department to make Hawkins, Indiana feel strangely familiar. Aiming for an anywhere in America look, this is why a small rural town was chosen for Hawkins' location. In the 1980s, young Americans started moving out of their suburban and rural childhood homes and into cities. So for viewers who were children in the 80s, Hawkins, Indiana feels just like home. Not only are the costumes and filming locations a work of art, but so are the set designs. In order to not look like a stock set, every item was hand-picked, creating a dynamic, lived-in space filled with familiarity, creating the feeling of going over to your friend's house. One of my favorite techniques to use in the show was instead of always relying on a photographic reference from the early 80s, the Duffer Brothers and company used their memories of the time, which alternatively allowed for the creation of uniquely designed characters, effects, and sets. While there are many departments that help create this collaborative work of art, these are the ones that stood out to me as an artist. So thank you for sticking around, and let's watch Season 3. My name is Slavsky, and I'll see you next time. Do svidanya.